Hello and welcome to lesson three in our in-depth look at learning NOB Omniscope. In this lesson, we're gonna take a closer look at the waveform, the vector scope, and the targets. Let's not waste any time. Let's just jump right in. As you can see, we've pretty much continued exactly from where we left off in lesson number two, and we're talking specifically about the waveform. Now, for the most part in this lesson, I'm going to talk about the Y waveform, but the concepts work the same across all of the different waveform types, which of course does bring us to the very first question, which types of waveforms do we have access to inside of NOB Omniscope? Now, you might think that you're going to come to the scopes dropdown which is not where we're going to want to go. What this is going to do is just give us the general waveform display, but what we want to do is get into the mode of the display. You'll see this scope here, this waveform, is set to luminosity or the Y value. You'll see that we have RGB, RGB parade, YRGB, etc., etc. Now, as you see in the current layout that I have going now, I not only have a Y waveform or a luminosity, but I also have an RGB parade as well. Now, once you have your waveform called up, there's a few great under the hood features that you have access to, like the ability to zoom in on the blacks by simply using the mouse wheel, scrolling forwards and backwards. And at any point, if you want to reset the scope, you can simply click the middle mouse wheel to reset the scope back to normal. Now, a couple other things that I do want to show you when it comes to the waveform monitor, I'm simply going to right click and I'm going to navigate down to its settings. I'm just going to place the settings. I'll place the settings right about here. All right, couple options that we have right out of the gate. You'll notice that we have the option for a scale override, meaning that we can get in and change the display from its default parameters to really anything we want here. And I'm just going to make sure that I click on the right drop down, which is our scale override. So, for example, if I wanted to see 8 bit 0 to 255, you'll see that as soon as I select that option, the scope is immediately updated with that display and that layout. Now, for the purposes of what we're doing, I'm simply going to deselect that because I want to leave it on its default that we had originally when we launched the application. We also have access to a low pass filter, which will remove noise from the signal and basically smoothen the scope shape. You'll see that we also have the ability to get in and really smooth it out here. There we go. Very nice. Again, I'm just going to toggle that off. And last but not least, I'm just going to head on over to the appearance here, and I'm just going to drag this up just a little bit here because I want to show you that right now we have the option to show true peak levels. Now, you'll see that I can toggle that off and on, and you'll notice that a peak level is not necessarily just the topmost or the highest level that the scope is going to display. You'll see that we do have a zero peak as well as in this case an 80 peak, which is where our highest luminance level is. And at any time, if I was to close this and basically just hit play, you'll see the black stay black and we get a little bit of fluctuation here inside of the brightest part of our shot. All right, so let's move on now and let's talk about the vector scope. Vector scope over here on the right, obviously dealing specifically with color, much like we had the ability to do in the waveform with zooming in on the blacks on our vector scope, we can actually zoom in on the actual scope itself. Now you'll notice that we're not just zooming in on the actual color information, it's on the entire scope itself and much like we had done inside the waveform I can simply click on that middle scroll wheel to reset the scope back to normal. Now what I also want to show you here I'm just going to right click is that I have the ability to actually split this scope up. I'm going to split it vertically right now to show you that we can actually take a look at the color values of a shot based on the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. Now we can do this either vertically or horizontally. Now for me, most of the time, I'm working with this disabled, but just having it as a feature is an extra added bonus. All right, let's now right click. Let's navigate to the settings for the vector scope. I'm just going to bring it right over here to the upper left hand side of the display. First thing I want to point out is the transform parameters. We can have YUV or hue, saturation, and lightness. 
We also have the ability to change the targets from 75%, we can add 100, or just have it at 100 based on what we are currently doing. Now, you'll also notice that much like the waveform, we have a low pass filter that again can be adjusted to remove as much noise as we might want to need. I'm just going to now head on over to the Appearance tab. We'll come back to LMH in just a second. I want to point out in here that we have the ability to get in and adjust the gain or the overall brightness of the color information. And what we also have the ability to do is to navigate right down here to the bottom and either show the flesh tone line or set it to exactly where we want it to be so that we can have that as a reference moving forward. Now I also want to point out that you do have the ability to get in and change the style of the vector scope. I'm just going to drop this down. You'll see that we have the standard scope, which is currently what I'm looking at right now, as well as the ability to take a look at the hue vector style, which was basically invented by Alexis Van Herkman from the Pimp Your Vector Scope ride. Now I'm putting the website on the screen if you want to get a little bit more information about this scope. I just wanted to show you that it's here. For most of the work we're going to be doing throughout this tutorial series, anytime that we see the vector scope, we are going to see it on its standard view, the one that we're comfortable working with. Now, you'll remember that I showed you that we could break the scope down into seeing the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows as far as the color values go. Well, if I head back to LMH, basically low, mids, and highs, what this gives us the ability to do is to actually get in and adjust where we want these ratios to appear. Now you'll notice that as I adjust them, they're going to appear on some scopes and disappear on others. So this is now how you can get in and be very specific about what's going to be shown in the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. Now I'm actually just going to turn that off and I want to head right down here to the alerts tab. Now this is one that I really, really like. So how does this work? Well, you'll notice that it's basically a toggle to begin with. We have show alert ring, show max ring, show outline. So we're going to start with showing the alert ring. Now I'm going to click on that. And you'll notice that a new circle has appeared around the scope. What the alert ring is, it's a way to define a maximum saturation ring which is going to be highlighted when the signal goes past it. Now I'm just going to come back here and we're going to see if the signal does go past it here. Now you'll notice the signal doesn't really do very much. It's a fairly constant shot. However, I do want to point something out here. This is obviously the, uh, if we want to call it the default setting for this alert ring. That doesn't mean that we can't adjust it though. You'll notice that if I navigate right up here, let's say hypothetically I wanted to make sure that the reds didn't go past a certain level. I can actually drag that right back as far as I want to have it go back, even to right about there. And then when I was to take this and play it back, obviously if the reds went anywhere past that ring, I would be notified of it right away. So something that's very important to keep in mind. All right, let's head right back to alerts to show you that we also have a max ring that we can have set, which is showing me how far out my colors go, as well as being able to get in and define the actual color shape by turning on its outline. Now, one last thing that I want to show you, and this is something that's common across all the scopes that I currently have displayed, is that at any time, what I can do is simply cue this up and if I navigate over top of any of the scopes and I hold Option or Alt on the Mac, you'll see that I can actually get the image to appear in the actual scope itself, which is a great way to have a visual reference of what exactly is creating a specific shape on the scope itself. Very, very handy to have. All right, now what I'm going to do here for my vector scope is I'm just going to come in here. I'm just going to turn off my alerts here. And I want to talk lastly about targets. Targets is something that I really, really like to use. Now targets we can find up here in the view drop down. You'll notice it right here, targets. Now with targets, I'm just going to move them over here for right now. There we go. We can show targets by using the shortcut of control or command and T. Now as soon as I turn it on, you're going to notice that a different target appears across the different scopes. You'll notice that it's two bars in the waveform 
and one in the vector scope. Now, what's great about the vector scope's target is that I can actually adjust it by simply clicking on it and grabbing and dragging it wherever I would like that RGB target to go to. Now, the luminance targets are very cool as well. You'll notice I have a bar here, 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 and here. What this is going to be used for is for me to quickly define an RGB, in the case of vector scope, or a luma target that maybe I want to make sure I don't go over or maybe that we don't go under. So all we have to do in here is to simply grab our little drag bar and we can position this wherever we like. If I didn't want the luminance values to go over 84, I could put that bar or that target right there and you'll see that I can even get in and much like we talked about before, use that control or command and click to punch in 0.84 to make sure that we are exactly where we want to be as far as being from zero to 100. And we can do the exact same thing here with the lower target as well. Targets are one of my favorite features inside of Nob Omniscope because they give me the ability to quickly take a look at any one of the scopes, make sure that my levels are exactly where I need them to be. So this way, any QC work that I'm doing will be able to be done as fast as humanly possible. All right, I think that's a good place to leave off for this lesson. In our next lesson, we're going to talk about the saturation luminance scope, channel plot, and CIE plot. <laughs>